Stephanie and welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, okay, so first let's talk about the meeting minutes taker. Uh, I thought the next person was Laura and she is not going to be able to make the call. Uh, so let's see, it's Jesse. I thought you went recently, Jesse. Can you take minutes? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so let me share my screen. Thank you, Jesse. Okay. So um, we, we start off with this every, every meeting. And although this is my last meeting uh, with ECAC, our sense of purpose as ECAC will endure. And, you know, uh, we're again, we're here to engage the, the town and educate the town, the staff, the council. We're here to educate the community. We're here to make decisions that will address the needs of the vulnerable. And my hope is that we'll continue to move with the same level of rigor, if not faster. Um, and my hope is also that we continue to build strong relationships with the town and the community. And, and not just Amherst as a town, but beyond Amherst, because climate change is, is not a local problem. So I just hope that we continue all the great work that you've all put in. And um, I'll be on the sidelines watching, but uh, rooting for all of you. Um, so with that, uh, we'll talk about our, we talked about the town manager goals, our roadmap, the five pillars that we're all working on. And we'll talk about the annual report on the call today. Uh, again, around heat pumps, region and state trends, solar, transportation, and pace. Um, our metrics, and again, this can change depending on, you know, what the, who the next person sharing will be. But um, Steve, I think, had a really nice idea as part of the report uh, to include YouTube views for the education series that we've started, and so that could be another metric that we can look into, uh, along with the uh, attendees uh, who come into this meeting. And then in terms of open actions, this is fairly old. It's been a while. I don't know if anybody else has been documenting actions because I missed a few meetings. Um, Don, a couple of items for you on PACE. Any updates here? I, I, I really don't. I've been basically gone for the last month. So. OK. So it is still open, these two action items, right? Yep. Okay. Um, the third action for me, so I did connect with the town manager, the town council, but Jesse, you got this at this point, right? The plan, I don't know what the plan is, but can you share it with the rest of the group here? I can't, we've got a, in the agenda, there's a line for, for talking about it. Oh, but I can, no, it can uh, wait. Yeah, if, let's, let's do that. Okay. Thank you. So the next one is, I, I guess it's in progress. So we're going to push the specialized code forward. Uh, Jesse will talk about it. The draft letter for the two DPU members. What happened to this action item? Did we say we we're going to proceed with this or pause? Andra, you were going to work on this one. I, I thought we tabled that. We did, um, right? Okay. With the with the, the rationale that we wanted the town council to work on the stretch code, the new specialized code, and not okay. distract them with this letter. That's my memory. Okay. And the same goes with the next one. We said we're not going to work on it, right? I think so. Lori was leading that up a little bit. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble with my Zoom. Um, I dropped, but uh, yeah, I think I think we kind of backed off from that. Okay. Okay. And then uh, this is complete. We should have moved this to complete. And then uh, 
questions for HEPAM, HEPAM discussion. I think that's complete. And then, oh, that, yeah, that's complete too. Okay. So we don't have anything new or the last couple of meetings that we talked about that are, that we want to track. Anybody know, remember? So I think the focus was on the specialized code as kind of a next step. Okay. Which is captured here and Jesse will talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks, Stephanie. Sure. Okay. So the next part of the agenda is uh, public comment. So Martha Hanner, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Hi, I would just like to take the opportunity to publicly thank Basu for your leadership this past year. It's been a pleasure to work with you that one time that I gave a presentation and I've appreciated your professionalism and your dedication and how you're working to try to move forward on, on several different uh, fronts from uh, the CARP report. So thanks so much and my best wishes to you for your success and whatever is your next endeavors here. And I certainly hope the ECAC can continue to live up to your high standards. So thank you. Thank you, Martha. And thank you for attending these meetings every every two weeks so really appreciate you being here thank you okay if anyone else has a comment please raise your hand and i will let you unmute it looks like anna is here okay uh, yeah no, no comments. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the agenda. Stella, is Stella here? Yeah. Okay. Actually, can I, can I, yeah. can I just jump in? Um, I am wondering if, if um, I know Anna can stay until about 5.15 and then has to leave and it would probably makes sense to do this update on the specialized code while she's present. I'm wondering about bumping that up in the agenda while they are present here, because that, that's limited. Does anyone mind if we did that? I think we're good, Jesse. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and start with the specialized code then? All right, so <clears throat> this is, let's see. So. Anna has is going to be the um, sponsor in the town council. It's been we have been working together uh, last week and this week to kind of put together and hone in, take Lori's presentation and kind of get it um, a little shorter, but put together um, a presentation. We're actually going to present this to the town council on Monday, which is next week on the 26th and it would love to be wonderful for anyone who can attend uh, physically or virtually that would be great and if you know people in the industry as well but I don't think uh, that that this is the meeting where it's going to turn into a large public conversation my sense is what's really going to happen let me just grab my notes here what's really going to happen is it, we're going to say this is a recommendation from the ECAC and and we're and our sponsor for this. Um, and then what will likely happen is the town council will refer this to the CRC, who will um, just go do a deeper dive and really look at the implications. And it is likely that we might even during that have the opportunity to meet with the CRC or they, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but maybe I'll go with Anna for one of their meetings or something like that. Um, and then it goes back to the council for a vote. And, and given that it is June, this is not going to happen before. Um, and then I'm getting a text here 
so if, if we want to just let Anna into the room, she can interrupt me and, and give a better, I don't know if you can do that, Stephanie. Um, but then, it co so essentially, um, the goal I think is to have the council vote on this before January 1st, and then give it six months to enact before July of 2024. Um, so we're, I think we, we were very successful to get on the agenda as soon as we did. But given the way that this process sort of has to go, it's not going to, this is not going to be, I don't, it, it, I don't think, I don't see, unless someone, yeah, it would, I don't see any way that this can be in place before July 2024. So it's going to be about a year. Um, which I think is reasonable. I've had really positive meetings with the town uh, inspection services and with Stephanie. So I think everything's going very positively and very well, but I do think it's a slow process, which I think is fine. It's, it's, it feels like it is very much going to happen, um, but I, I don't want, I, it needs to go at, at, a, at a reasonable pace where, um, you know, everyone invested in this, all the stakeholders will have time to see it and respond and, and give input, et cetera. Does, does that sound about right? Are you asking me, Jesse? All right, or Stephanie or, or anybody. <laughs> um, I guess I will, I'll share my perspective and then Stephanie, maybe you can fact check me if, if, I, if I get anything wrong. Um, the, yes, Jesse, you, you've got it right. So it'll come to council twice. Um, and so it'll come to us for an initial referral. It'll go to the community resources committee. They deal with housing and building codes and all of that. Um, and so the first, the only thing that I would maybe add is that there, there are three, the, the three different stages of this, having voices make a little noise can be really helpful. So the first time the council sees this will be uh, Monday. I'm, I'm finishing the memo for Athena, puts up with a lot for me. Um, and so I'm finishing the memo up now for the packet that kind of just outlines what the code is and why it's important. Um, and then Jesse has been kind enough to offer to come do that, uh, to work on the presentation and, and present to the council. The first vote is to refer it. Um, and so we, we still have to clear that hurdle. It needs to get a referral, which basically is the council saying, we want to spend time on this. We want to move forward with this. Um, committee debates it. This is, I, I mean, this code is a little bit different because we can't edit it. So it's really just an up or down. There's, we're not allowed to change it. Um, and so I don't anticipate that it'll take a, a very, very long time um, in committee. But I think, Jesse, your timeline is correct in that we we won't, the council is is taking, trying to ease up for the summer to give the staff a little bit of a break. And um, so we're not meeting as much. So in order to give at least a six month head start for folks once we ideally pass this, um, January, is that what you said? No, you said July, there we go. July, 2024 would be the, um, the implementation date. Uh, so it will get voted on in committee in terms of just a recommendation. It comes back to the council either way. Hopefully that will, we're anticipating, I'm hoping that will happen around in, in August or September um, and we'll go from there then the council votes on it again. Um, I think that that's about it. What's gonna be in the council packet, uh, if this is helpful, is my memo, which again is just kind of a quick overview of why this matters, what it does. Um, I'm going to include the actual code, even though it's really confusing because I think that that's relevant to include. Um, and then there was a really good resource from Watertown when they passed this, they did a, a grid, um, Jesse and I looked at it, where they compared the uh, the specialized code and then the opt-in or the, the normal stretch code, excuse me, and then the specialized code um, to show where the differences were. And that's really the kind of the key, the key um, uh, thing that I think most folks are, are gonna wanna look at. So yeah, if y'all could, um, if y'all wanna write in or, or come speak or call in or however you wanna make public comment, public comment is always really helpful, um, especially from, from folks who are industry experts. So, um, or who care. That, that helps too. I think that's so, so Anna, on, on Monday. Anyway? Yeah. Sorry, on Monday it's just going to be introducing it, and then a yes or no decision made by the council. 
whether to move forward with it or not. To send it to committee, yes. This, yeah, okay. Yep. And, and usually um, that's dependent on what? Uh, if people think it's a good use of our time and energy. Um, so I think okay. that this is where that, this is where the, the public comment can be really helpful in terms of telling your counselors why you think they should be spending time on this um, and why you, should, you think the committee should be moving forward with it. Um, that's, that's this part of public comment is like why this is important, why it matters. Um, I mean, I, that's kind of all the public comment, but that is the, that is the vote on Monday is to refer it to committee. It might be quick. I, honestly, I, I have no way of, of guessing what's going to take a lot of time and what's not. I have tried and been very wrong before. So I, I've stopped trying to guess, um, what'll go quickly and what'll go slowly. Does it require unanimous voting? Or to go through? No, it requires a majority. It requires, an, I believe it's a civil okay. majority vote to go to okay. committee. Um, what I need to check on is because I'll check on what the, what the ultimate vote needs to be. It's not a zoning code. So I think it's just a simple majority, but I'll confirm that. Okay. I, I was just thinking, Jesse, if we should bring somebody from the 17 communities who have uh, voted for this code, would it help if we can bring someone in from one of the towns? Um, just to add another layer there and saying why they did it. Um, just wondering. I think it might be, I guess from my perspective, that might be helpful. I don't think you need to scramble for that for Monday necessarily, but they could always write a letter um, about their experience or you know, call into the committee meetings as well as to the, to the full council when it comes back. Um, but I mean, if, it, if you want to, that would be a really interesting perspective to have in my opinion. I don't know, Jesse or Stephanie, if you have any other thoughts on, on that. I, 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 yeah, we could, I wonder about it. I don't imagine, I don't know how to do that for Monday, but, but that might be worth just mentioning. Um, there's, that, that there are 17 communities and that might be a good place to start uh, for us to reach out and, and maybe bring that voice to the CRC. I'm, yeah, I like that. I like that concept. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure how to, I don't know if any community and if, if there's any community that can say, you know, it's great. We love having the specialized code. I just don't think, I, I just don't even know if any buildings have even been permitted under the specialized code yet. And it might be, um, but I, I'll try to find out. I like that. Um, and, and Anna, what happens if you all vote no? Do we get another chance at it sometime soon or do we have to wait? Um, gosh, that's a really good question. I, I think that you could think about a way to represent it, but I'm pretty sure it's a, a no is a, is a no um, in, terms of, in terms of this. I will say a referral, typically those are a little bit easier to get than a final vote. Um, because often if people have questions, they want to see the committee answer their questions. Um, but I think that for you all, in terms of getting the referral vote, um, I don't, I, to be clear, I don't necessarily anticipate it being a problem. Um, okay. But I think really appealing to, in, in comments, if you make comments, uh, I, I might consider including something about how this is helping us reach our goals. Um, you all could, you know, endorse this at this meeting and and carry it forward. I mean, I guess you kind of have because you wanted to pitch yeah. it to us. So I think we, we wrote a letter. You know, too. it's important. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. So I think that like that's really helpful. I think talking about how this helps us to reach our goals is is going to be the important part for the referral, um, and 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 general voting. But I think we're going to get we'll get more into the details of it when it comes down to fully adopting or not. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Yeah. Any other questions for Anna or Jesse? Vasu, if I might, I'd love to uh, also take just 20 seconds to, to also thank you for everything that you've done for ECAC. I think that this has been you've uh, your, your grid, uh, your implementation grid and all of the work that you've done has been really impressive. And it's been pretty great to know that this committee is is driving a lot of this work, right? Um, you all are, are absolutely the engine here. and anything that we can do to, to support that, carrying it forward, we, we will do. But Vasu, a lot of that momentum 
came from you. And so we're really, I'm really grateful to you for, for all your work um, and generally to all of you as a committee, but I wanna, wanna shout out Basu um, in this moment too. So thank you. Thanks, Appreciate Anna. it. All right, I'm gonna return to the attendees unless anybody has any questions, but y'all know how to reach me and I will uh, see most of you on, on Monday in the audience probably, but still. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Anything else, Jesse, on specialized code? No, I'm, I'm just gonna spend the weekend sort of brushing up and, and trying to be ready for questions on Monday. Um, but the, you know, Lori did most of the work. We're, we're waiting to hear back from Stephanie on, on just some, some feedback from the town. And uh, no, it's been a real, actually it's been a great kind of ECAC success story up till now kind of every, you know, Vasu, you got it going, Lori picked up the ball, handed it to me. It's been fairly seamless as far as sort of carrying the work forward, um, which is, has been great. I'm glad to have the baton and hope to see some or all of you on Monday. And what time is that on Monday, Jesse? Do you know? You'd think I would. Um, well, their meetings start at 6.30, but okay. it could be a while before. There's no set no, time. But, but the public comment is all at the beginning. Right. But True. I wanted to start at 6.30. Presentation. All right. 6.30 is good enough for me. Thank you. Okay. Stella, over to you for transportation updates. Yeah. Um, so... We were actually just visiting the other side of the family in Germany, and it was very inspiring and sometimes depressing <laughs> transport wise. <laughs> but uh, but I think I forgot at the last meeting to like mention the most important thing that came out of the conversation with TAC, which is that somebody on TAC, and I apologize, I forget who, had the really good idea that ECAC and TAC could collaborate to um, really try to have a plan for uh, active transport at the new school because Fort River is at like is not not a friendly place to like walk bike or roll to. Um, so the idea came up to to somehow work together to really make sure that like there's infrastructure there for that and have that be the thing that like ECAC and TAC really collaborate. Um, to get going. So I guess my question for the committee is if people think that seems reasonable, what the kind of, what our role could be, whether it's um, purely advocacy or working with TAC to actually like come up with what we think the actual infrastructure should be and who that goes through, like presumably the town manager, like, is that a letter? So what channel and how, so I guess there's two questions. One is, is do people like that idea? And two is, if people like that idea, then what, how to implement? I like the idea of implementing a joint two committees to advise on a plan. I think that we'd have to be given the task to to do it by somebody for it to be worth investing a lot of time. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think we'd also want to see the 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 plans because, like, for all we know, there optimistically there is already a plan, but maybe there's not. <laughs> But I, presumably, if there's a plan, then the plans for the new school would end up would include that. Jesse, um, question one: I love the idea, um, and number two, how to do it. I, I would be careful not to have it kind of create work for um, particularly, you know, the design team who may. They, they, there are probably experts involved, and so it might be. I wonder if, if an, 
just a joint TAC ECAC like um, letter even to to the building committee to say like we encourage you to pursue these things. Um, I think if we're involved in a sort of nuts and bolts way, I can't imagine that being productive. I think we would get in the way more than, but but it just, and, but that could be preceded by a casual conversation with the building committee. Are you guys already doing this? And if they are, then we write a letter to say how great it is or something instead of do this thing <laughs> that you're already doing. Yeah, 100% agree with Jesse. Thanks for the comment. Uh, Dwayne? Yeah, I, I've a third the idea that it's a good idea um, for sure. Um, um, and I the idea of, of getting more um, non vehicle transportation to the schools sounds like a win win for the students and, and for the community. I guess um, in advance of writing a or reaching out to the planning committee or to the town. Um, I do wonder if there's any sort of back of the envelope calculations or analysis or thinking that we can do, might do to sort of move forward about how potentially exciting this could be and, 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 and innovative um, uh, in terms of, uh, well, one, our metric of greenhouse gas reductions uh, but also um, in terms of what, um, and uh, indeed, you know, Fort River is not in the middle of town like uh, the current, well, Wildwood, I guess it is. So it, it, it's a little bit more challenging that way. But, you know, what would be uh, just at a high level, some of the solutions we would be thinking about to, to um, uh, or ideas that we would want to move forward with the town um, I don't know if it has to do so much with the planning of the school, except um, it, it's more in terms of, you know, how do you have corridors for um, this type of transportation from major parts of town to that site, for example? And is there something, uh, especially since we have three or four years or however long it's going to take to build the school um, and, and many more years after that to operate the school? Um, you know, some thinking about uh, maybe some new new pathways uh, to get um, kids to uh, to that school without getting on the roads. Thanks, Wynn. Does that help, Stella? Um, I think so. So, I think it sounds like it starts with figuring out just who who's responsible for for planning this. Right, and what the current, what the categories <laughs> for sure yeah, yeah. of their design is, right? Because and then, and then drafting some sort of letter, either supporting what's already going on or suggesting that this is something of high priority to the community. Yeah. Does anybody know who who like who would have that information? Like, is it the town council or is it the design team or like where in the design process are no. they? Kathy Shane is the um, counselor um, who's chair of the committee or co-chair or something. And so we could have her come talk to us um, or we could have one of the design team members. But I think maybe it would be good to start at the council level. Yeah, that sounds good. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I wonder like if something, because whenever well this is a little bit of a side but whenever i think about the like widening route nine project like i don't understand why there isn't public transit being put in if they're widening route nine already like it blows my mind so like how can we not <laughs> repeat that like like why isn't there like a protected bike lane or like a streetcar you know yeah we nod in agreement <laughs> Yeah, dedicated bus lane, maybe you know, like <laughs> well, I, I want streetcars back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll reach out to Kathy Shane then and see if she would maybe come and be willing to talk and and figure out what's going on with that. Thanks, so. I mean, I, I just 
you know, want to point out that it's it's not something that's extremely urgent, right? Because we're talking, I think that Dwayne mentioned it's going to take three, four years, but obviously we can start planning ahead, but how soon ahead do we want to get, right? And something to think about. Yeah, I mean, I think that what TAC raised also is is one of the reasons that this would be helpful is because like it could potentially be kind of a vehicle for for community education too, mm -hmm. given that it involves like the new school and there's so much conversation around the new school. So I think the in some ways that's an argument in favor of a very public drawn out discussion of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Stella. Yeah, of course. Okay, I, I forgot uh, that we need to vote on minutes from the last meeting. So let's do that. Did everybody get a chance to review the meeting minutes? Anybody want to move to, to move to accept? Okay. Thanks, I second. Okay, and uh, voice vote in no particular order. Allison, you have to unmute. Abstain. Okay, and Roof? Yes. Selman? Yes. Gregor? Yes. Raghavan? Abstain. D? Abstain. Rose? Yes. Okay, I just lost track. That's like one, two, three, four. I had four of you. Okay. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to pace. Wait, was that that was four three zero? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Well, it's four zero three. Four zero three. It's all right, Jesse. I got it. <laughs> no worries. Don, any updates on pace? I think you mentioned it earlier. Skip it. This meeting, talk about it at the next meeting. Is that good? You're on mute, by the way. Sorry. Um, yeah, we could talk about it at next meeting. I will be at the next meeting and okay. I'll touch base with Stephanie before then, just so we can see where things lie with um, the agency that's putting together the um, new. Um, a guidance for use of the program. Okay. Will we be regretting two weeks, uh, Don, or do you need more time? I'm more than welcome to have a conversation with Stephanie in the interim and do whatever work I need to do. I just don't know where the agency is on, um, uh, on putting together the guidance for the extension of the PACE program um, to uh, new construction, which is what the big deal is. Okay. I guess let's just hold off then for the meeting in a month then instead of the next meeting. We'll talk about solar and, and heat pump. Yeah. I mean, they did. Correct me if I'm wrong, Stephanie. I think they thought they would have these guidance uh, data out this summer. So I, I hope we'll have it, but it's an agency and I, you know, they'll have it when they have it. So yeah, this is we're we waiting on mass development and they, I think they were cautiously optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not ready yet, but I have the contact information and I can reach out. Okay. All right. Uh, the next part is the annual report. And I think this is going to take the bulk of our time. So let me share my screen. So thank you all for your feedback. And I got Laura's feedback five minutes ago, so I didn't get a chance to review it, but um, her comments were around the IRA funds. But let's go through the format here, make sure everybody's aligned with the format, and then we'll go through the wording as well. So I have the PDF file here that I'm sharing, and then on my other screen, I have uh, my Word document that I'll continue editing. Um, so this is going to be the format for the annual report. We'll, we'll start with the high level summary and then those five pillars that we're working on, state and region policies, heat pumps, solar, transportation, pace, 
to talk about other accomplishments, community engagement, make some high level recommendations for the town manager for calendar for town manager goals for calendar year 2024. Um, and then just a references section with links. And my hope is, uh, and, and you all can decide this, that we share this at a town council meeting, if that's possible. Um, I think it'll be much more beneficial than just sending a report and having hoping that they will review it. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it up to all of you to decide, but uh, that would be my recommendation uh, to review this with, with the town council. So I'll, go, I'll just pause here. Let's make sure we're reading every sentence here and giving me any feedback and I'll make some, I'll make changes uh, live here. And if you have comments, just speak up. Uh, you don't have to raise your hand. And I don't know what you all thought about this and if we should keep this or not. Um, just figured we can have a standardized approach on when we submit the report and the annual spend review and then review of town manager goals. And I, I, I was originally thinking that I also include something around when we report out to not just submitting the annual report, but reporting that to the town council, but I removed it. So I just have review of goals instead the next year. Basu, I just have one, um, this is such a little thing, but um, mm -hmm. the Earth Day Festival is really called, it's called the Sustainability Festival. So <laughs> why not just call it that? Okay. And I just wanna say that that name was chosen from a previous committee many iterations ago. It was an energy task force, but they're the ones who came up with the name. So of sustainability festival. So that's why I okay. kind of feel we should stick with it. Yep, yep, okay. In that last blue square that just scrolled off the top, is PACE supposed to be all caps? Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Thanks, Steve. H2. And we'll talk about the ones in yellow um, that I'm either questioning or just new updates from possibly Laura and other folks. And I've added links as well for all the sources where I got the data or information. If people need more information, they can click on it. Um, Basu, can you can yeah. you stop scrolling for a second? Yes. Um, for the aggregation plan, I think you said, hold on. The fruition of that work is noted this year with the completion of the aggregation application. It's not completed yet. It hasn't been submitted. Um, okay that collection of all the public comment is part of that process. So there's still materials being gathered. So I wouldn't say it's a complete application yet. Okay. Um, You'd say the development. 
with the development of the yeah okay uh, of the aggregation application application, application. yeah okay yes got it and, and Laura just sent this um I didn't get a chance to edit the information Let me just, um, I, I'm not sure what Laura is referencing there, um, but it seems out of place in that set of bullets because it talks about other municipalities and Greenfield Savings Bank is not that. Yeah, so, yeah, I have to look at the comment uh, that Laura made. Uh, let's see, I can pull her email up. Yeah, she's yeah. Her comment is new green bank in Massachusetts that is combined with affordable housing. So yeah, I. Oh, that's the, that's not the Greenfield it's Savings green bank. bank. That's that's the 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 climate bank. I think it's called or clean yeah. bank. That's under development. It's climate bank. Climate bank. Climate bank. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? Okay. There is also and legislation for a green bank. And what town is that? What? No, no, it's statewide. State. Oh, it's statewide. It's, okay. It's the it's being established by the governor. Got it. Okay. To fund low income retrofits, primarily. Okay, do we want to try to wordsmith this right now? So maybe not, it, but I, I, I'd i argue maybe it should go in the next category of what's needed from the town and what's needed from the town is somebody to track that and take advantage of it as much as possible. Um, it, it's also possible that should go up under state and regional. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's probably a better place. So here, this is under state and regional, um, Andra. So I, I think it can go in what's needed from town under state and region. I think it makes sense that it's there under this category. Do you agree, Andra? I'm sorry, I must be looking at an old um, version. I'm looking at yeah. the one that came with the. I've, um, I've made updates. Packet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've made updates to it. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, I can't under, see it on my phone, so I'm trying to follow along. But, why don't I email this to you right now, Andra? Okay. So you can follow along. But it is under um state and region trends okay great great I just emailed it to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then Andra, you wrote this and about the specialized code and I don't think this sentence makes sense. So I, I left it there so we can have a conversation about it because the specialized code is not just about all electric buildings. It also has mixed fuel 
There's like different parameters and different hertz. I know. Yeah, it's sort of, it's a little bit of a simplification to say all electric. And it, it's also not just about the energy source. It's about, you know, the, uh, a lot more than that as well. So we could probably wordsmith it to be more general. <laughs> Yeah, Jesse, what would you recommend here? Buildings with lower hertz ratings, or uh, would it be a different definition? This is the meanwhile sentence that you've got highlighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I, that you're that you can't change the speed at which a building permit is granted. That would be illegal. So. <laughs> That's what um, I was going to say. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I think maybe I might replace that with educate or facilitate um, awareness of of the implications of the the code and the and the ways that it incentive the ways that it's driving building construction. I'm just not. Sh I mean, I'm not sure that what's highlighted. It's a separate thing, and it would be mm. tricky. Um, I, I just really put it in there to have something, knowing knowing that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want anyone, you know, rushing in to put a building <laughs> permit in before the specialized code is going to require them to do something they'd rather not do, you know. It's like if we can put it out there in just, you know, this is our intention, this is the way we're going. We really support developers who will support this goal. You know, I I, I know you can't actually speed up or slow down. I mean, we could encourage yeah, let me just you this. could encourage people to adopt the the um the premises of the code before it is formal, you know, before it becomes law. Yes. Yes. Um, knowing that this is how it's going, the direction it's going. Maybe tell that, people that, they tell people they don't have to wait until July, till a year from July. <laughs> you can right. get a great you can get a great all electric building anytime. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that since this is under what's needed from town, it would be something like a statement from town encouraging developers to be proactive in uh, adopting the guidelines of the specialized code. Or yeah, provide in, provide information. I mean, it, it, it we're good. It's encouraging people to do. I mean, it's 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 very shaky ground and, and way out of, it would be way out of their lane and inappropriate for them to tell people how to do things. But here's information about the code that's gonna be happening in a year. There's a lot of great stuff in here. Um, you don't have to wait, you, you know, sort of neutrally provide that information. Okay, we'll get the advocates onto it then. <laughs> <laughs> So is, is that, does that well make sense here, Jesse? Provide Jesse, information to the developer. There's a, downside, there's a downside to that, Jesse. If you give them information, they may they may not even be aware that the specialized code is coming. And it may actually speed up their their desire to, to apply. <laughs> this is this is my concern, Don. I mean, That's I'm a good sure point. There's a lot of people Maybe. out there who aren't paying attention you know to the fact that there might be a new specialized code and lo and behold we give them information and the next thing <laughs> you know, they're running in to get their application before july uh get their application approved well i'm not so worried about one or two houses you know, i'm i'm concerned about large buildings and that would just be such bad etiquette, <laughs> I think, for a developer in, to do that. 
unless they're making it an all electric building anyway. Do we want yeah. to maybe take it out? Just adopt a specialized code is the recommendation. I was just going to say, there's really nothing we could do. <laughs> I mean, the town can't do anything about that because people will, you know, I mean, you'll, if people, if there's a change in code coming, there may be some people who will take advantage, but I don't think it's going to be this mad rush all of a sudden of all these people trying to build buildings with fossil fuels. I hope not. I don't think so. Well, they would have to, it would have to be oil and propane, which would be very hard to do for a big building. Certainly so couldn't do it with propane since the gas moratorium and they're not going to put in giant oil. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. They're not going to rush. They'd have to have their plans and everything already. And it's just such a long process. I don't think it's going to happen. OK. And then um, this was um, Laura's comment. Um, and I didn't get a chance to read the rest of the commentary that she made. Do you want to talk about this? Is this, Stephanie, based on what you know, IRA funds still available? Yeah, oh, Unallocated. absolutely. Yeah, Unallocated? I, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're okay. just, folks are still trying to sort of get a handle on how to access them. So I don't think. Yeah. Okay. I, you could even just leave it, you know, for leverage IRA funds for municipal projects. You could even just say that. Okay. And then uh, we'll have to wordsmith this. Um, we could do it now or we could do it later, but um, feel free to chime in if you want. Otherwise, we'll go to the next section if everybody's good with. Is everybody good with whatever else is in the um, region and state policy trends? Anyone get a chance to read it? Okay. Okay, heat pumps. Is that true that HVAC is the biggest contributor of carbon emissions? Because I thought it was like buildings broadly. Is that, is, yeah, yeah. Build, buildings are, are, yeah. Put an S on contributors. Next section is solar. Steve and Dwayne, should I say members or should I say ECAC participated? Just leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, it's really just one yeah. CA member on That's that task, that working yeah. group. Yeah, okay. I'll say CAC participated. Um, you know, now that I'm looking at this, you, the ECAC also prepared a memo that maybe that's a separate bullet point because that's, a, that's sort of separate from the solar bylaw working group. Yep. So it might just be ECAC prepared a memo, get rid of the alt. So yep. there we go. You can abbreviate the solar bylaw working group at that point. Yeah. And Stephanie, you will send me the link when that's ready on Friday. Yeah. I'll add it in. Yeah. 
you know, th th this looks fine. Um, one of the public comments we got at our last meeting was, I think, sort of questioning why we are excluding the colleges and the universities. And that just crossed my mind that maybe we want to, at some point, re-explain why we have done that in, in our analyses. I don't know if that has to be done Should here. Should we say it here? Steve? We could if, if we can remember exactly the justification in nice concise, concise language. Well, I, I, our whole annual report is only about the um, yeah, non that's true. institutions. And so maybe that just needs to be right up front, a reminder. I think so, because that's our metrics with greenhouse gas emissions generally. And we're not right. we're not trying to promote heat pumps to the uh, campuses either, for example. Should maybe. I put it on the summary page? Yeah, I think so. Or I could just include it here. And well, I think because they have their own active climate action plan or something. Yeah, I think it needs to be right up front. A reminder that that's what the CARP is about. I would just pluralize that plans because it's. Oh, yeah. You know. And I think I don't know if it's worth saying it here, but I, I also sort of like I remember we made this decision, too, because we didn't want to take credit for the work the colleges were doing and sort of unfairly benefit our numbers. We wanted to have the numbers come from. We wanted it to be harder to achieve our numbers, if I'm not mistaken, which I think is a good thing. And also we wanted to avoid double counting or the. Um, uh, um, view of double counting in terms of the you know the the colleges and I know the university is going to promote their own numbers to the um, to out to the state and to outsiders yeah right yeah yeah redundant instead of double dipping redundant uh... but but I think that this needs to be about the whole report. As well, you could be re a reminder here if need be. But you can reminder re redundant um, the, the greenhouse gas emissions counting. Uh, inventory assessment. Sure. <laughs> no, I I would as per Andre, I would suggest that 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 goes up higher, not in the solar section, for example. So put it in the summary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Did you I mean that high? I wasn't opposed to leaving some of it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of it needs to be there. Um, just basically that it doesn't include the solar uh, at the universe at the campuses uh, because they are um, working under their own climate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't, you're saying I did in both places, right? Yeah. Yeah, but not. I wouldn't add the greenhouse gas inventory here. Yeah. 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 On solar, solar and climate goals, maybe, and plans. Put that one. Climate plans, all the same plans. Okay, and then so back here in the summary. Colleges and universities oh, are not that. included okay. in this report. Oh, okay. Um, or actions related to colleges and universities are not included in this report. It so, should be, yeah, after the um, bit about 25% reduction by 2025. And before the five focus areas. Okay. Actions related to quality and internal support the state of the on an action plan. Just leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go back to solar.
Analysis analysis. I might add to the what's needed from town is um, not just continued <laughs> leadership with ECAC, but also continued um, engagement of the community. Um, given that there's so much um, interest in the community. Ah. Continued relationship with DCC support. I would, I would just make that a separate bullet because it really it's different from yeah. the from the yes it's more broad yes. than the municipal projects yeah okay well what's needed from the town i think continued engagement with the community given yeah sorry yeah continued engagement with the community okay and maybe in the community can, at the end can be deleted. Yeah. Given a high level of interest. Say what? Highlighted? Given a high level of interest. Oh, hi. Okay. Okay, transportation. Stephanie, I wasn't sure if this made sense here as an accomplishment. Um, no, because the fleet inventory, we've kind of hit a snag with that. I'm I'm thinking now that I just need to write it up as an RFP and go to bid because the folks we were working with we were doing a lot of work. We couldn't provide them exactly what they wanted. So I think I want to start that whole process with somebody else. Um, so I wouldn't say I can put it in the process. In. Yeah. It's not an accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. So I can put it here, but I, I have an action here. Well, let's review it. Um, I'll, we'll come back to this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no biggie, but. Um... I would just add, uh, I think it's North Carolina, NC after Durham. Yeah. And then a couple of questions for you here, Stephanie. So we have a, um, we received grant funding for a level three fast charger that was actually secured in 22, but this is part of my update actually. Um, it hasn't been installed yet because we didn't have the utility support for the covering the cost of the infrastructure, but we do now. So that is something that's going to move forward. It just hasn't yet. Okay. And I, I think I saw so. uh, <laughs> how, how many uh, charging stations? Well, we have, how many do we what? have? We have seven, I think already and now we're getting a dc fast charge so we have like 14 ports available for charging within the town mostly in the downtown and now we're going to get a dc fast charge as well is it public information of where that's going to be located um potentially in the cvs parking lot is where we're yeah um because it's a we want a downtown location and that's a really good spot for something like that Meaning the town parking lot next to the CVS parking lot? Correct. Yes, the municipal lot next to the CVS lot. How large, Stephanie? Uh, the, 100, it's, 300. yeah, it, well, it's a, well, let's see. I don't remember. Two. There's usually, well, I don't know if this is a single port or a dual port. I have to double check because it's been a while since I've, looked at that. I'm just trying to find out that we can get Eversource support to get the utility and, you know, structure in. I haven't looked at it. I don't remember.
And then another question for you, Stephanie. Oh, uh, yeah, so that um, there is an effort moving forward there. The schools tend to be working primarily on they're kind of taking the lead with the finance director is actually shepherding a lot of that through. So there is an effort underway. Okay, nothing to call out for the facility. I can't really call it out yet. I can't really say yeah. for sure. Okay. But well, we did I, get some funding. It, I think it was public that, um, it, yeah, that funding was applied for and got. <clears throat> for a got bus. For a yeah. bus. Yeah. yeah, but I think we're trying to look into how much can we expand it even more. So should I call that out? Because it did happen last this well yes. last fiscal. Right? Yep. Yep. So funding approved mm -hmm. to purchase fleet of electric buses. Uh, how many? I wouldn't one. say fleet. I think it's only one. <laughs> okay. Oh. So, and one more. One more. And it, uh, uh, we already have one. It's pretty old, but we have one, so it would be an an additional. So we'd have yeah, two. I would put, I would we, put an additional. Vasu, yeah. there are some emails. Yeah. I mean, if if you wanted to, like, I don't know if it seems like relatively minor, but but we like assisted members of the public in making their voices heard. If you wanted to, put yeah, it. I do remember that, Stella. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we should call that out. I mean, how. Do you remember what we did where we just engaged I remember, with the community? I know Yeah, Laura we, we facilitated community. community. I would put it, I would write it as like facilitated community engagement or or something. We like connected somebody who, who maybe a couple of people who felt strongly about that with the person at the schools. To um advocate for more electric buses. And I say as a result? I wouldn't was say. I wouldn't okay. say that. As I, I remember, it, no. the result yeah. of the engagement was the school basically said, we already applied for it and we got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, just leave it there. But funding was approved to purchase an additional electric bus. Okay. Okay. Well, wasn't sure if this was helpful. I found it online. I was just looking at how many oh. rebates for electric vehicles as a potential metric that we can track to. It is on this uh, more EV website, Massachusetts Office of Rebates. Mm. It can be yes. confusing. <laughs> I'm inclined not to include that yeah. in the report. I think it's interesting to consider using that and seeing if it's possible to get disaggregated data and do our own. But yeah, that was yeah, and we we tried asking for that data and was not available. So this was the best I had. Well, is this um, data from Amherst, uh, of just Amherst? Correct. Vehicles? Yep. So so you, well, you... just... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's just Amherst. It's, it, I mean, it's comparable to what I did with the solar. Yeah. Right? The so you can take and the just code. found, found oh, all okay. the Amherst. Um, yeah. Why don't you put Amherst residents then? Um, I mean, it's the report for Amherst, so I didn't. Okay, but I that's know, I know, <laughs> but I thought this was state level. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, Stephanie, if I'm keeping this statement, should we get rid of this one? Yeah, because, I mean, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm 
I, yeah, well, I mean, that's not exactly what we're going to be doing, but because we're looking for more information about transitioning our fleet. So maybe you could say something about. Sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm just trying to think of how to phrase this. Um, Towner's pursuing a timeline for transitioning its fleet to all to be to an all electric fleet. But that's different than this one. This one's just asking yes. for data. Right. That's why I'm saying it's a separate bullet. Oh, okay. Okay. Town is um you said just putting a plan together? Is pursuing uh well wait, this is under what's needed. Yeah, I guess what's needed is a plan to execute. Well, that I mean, so what we were looking for is to get, develop a fleet inventory that would include a timeline for transitioning the, the fleet to be all electric. So that was part of it. So that is something we need. There you go. Mako fleet, all electric town fleet, fleet for the town. Well, you could just say timeline to transition. Uh, timeline or establish transition to an all electric. There you go. Town fleet. Okay. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that works. Okay. <clears throat> Install DC fast charge in FY24. And then uh, Stella, you had this. Well, we're talking new school, three, four years down the line. Should we keep this or remove? I think there should be something that's not car focused. So whether that's bus ridership, um, as a metric or like, I think it's really important that we not lose sight of uh, needing to transition away from personal vehicles as well. So um, yeah, I don't know whether it's this or whether it's something else, um, whether it's implementation, like adoption of the TAC plan. Um, should we just, like should we just call it exactly that is to adopt and I don't know what TAC is doing and are they coming up with top priorities for the town manager goals next year? And we could just say there's going to be a plan coming from TAC and- Well, their plan's not finished yet. That's why it's tricky. Okay. Yeah. Basu, you could add um, reestablish an e-bike network because our company went bankrupt. Oh. I'll, I'm reporting on that as well. When I get to mine, I have a long list today. Okay. Okay. Stella, is that sufficient or do you want to call attention to TAC? No, I think, I think, um, I think that it's good. It's still not like public transit and I would like to like, support like public transit in this document uh, uh what, about, what about under accomplishments just establishing well i guess you have it just presented the current work to tick tack yeah okay it's already there yeah fine I think what about adding, well, but well, we don't have it necessarily. The data is of bus ridership. Or do we? Is that the metric that yeah. we need to capture? Yeah. Our metrics, were you envisioning only things that we already have or things that we want? No, things that we want to. Oh, I would say bus ridership is definitely something we want. We'll just say data on bus ridership. I'd say school bus ridership too. 
PAC has school bus ridership. I Ugh. believe they definitely have they definitely have pedestrian numbers. Okay. Is that good, Stella? Then yeah, that's good. Is that okay? Because the other thing is as we're updating our community dashboard, some of these metrics can go in there, right? If we think that there's a need. Yeah. Or if it makes sense. Okay. Uh pace, um, Don, I didn't hear from you. Just send me whatever you can or um or yeah, we can work on it offline given the time we have. But can you send me whatever you think is critical? Yeah, yeah I can. Okay, thank you. And then once um, once I'm done, I can send this to Lori and she can share this with everybody on the next call. So, uh, Stephanie, is that okay? Is that how you would see this play, play out? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, this one here, we talked about it in section two. I originally had it as in under accomplish other accomplishments. So I don't know if it makes sense for me to keep it or remove. I'll let you review it. Depends if there's anything you included here that isn't mentioned in section two. I mean, this one says entered into agreement. Um, I mean, that, that one has pretty much the same information. Uh, if you go back to section two, I guess you could put the memorandum of understanding yeah. in to section two, but everything else I think is there. Yeah, okay. Okay. And it's not, mm, okay, it's like, never mind. Actually, let me do that now. It's easy. Steve, I, I thought I removed this. Is it okay if I remove the highlighted uh, statement here? Because we said ECAC is exploring ways to add new provisions and I can just get rid of this. Yes, yeah, you did say that you're gonna drop that. That is fine. Yeah. My only tiny littlest quibble <laughs> is um, we're gonna be exploring ways to add these provisions that may or may not be through the rental registration bylaw. Um, that that's to be determined if that's the best vehicle for it. So the sentence at the end of the first paragraph, you'd say ECAC is exploring ways to add new provisions to the bylaw in the coming year, colon. Um, I think it's probably okay the way it is. Uh, so are you not going to say that it was not adopted yeah i wasn't sure if it i mean i'm talking we're talking accomplishments here so i figured it made it's, sense to remove that and just instead well, say we're still go, we're going to pursue these provisions yeah, the accomplishment is that we pursued it <laughs> yes and the result was it didn't work i think it should be in our annual report yeah we 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 got it pretty far along, which was an accomplishment in itself, even if it wasn't all the way to the end. I, yeah, I, you can leave that that last line that you just put in. These proposals were dropped from the draft rental registration bylaw in spring of 2023. 
that's a factual statement. I, and also, I think it's really good to show people what you developed and the fact yes. that it was dropped so yes. that we're saying, okay, so these things didn't get included. I don't know that the rental registration bylaw is going to be the best place for them, quite honestly, because, you know, I mean, this sort of stemmed from that whole building accelerator program effort, which was really about maybe creating something separate. So well, we I were following a, a model that already existed in um, other cities. So, right. But what if you, I, let's see, just if the sentence ECAC is exploring ways to add new provisions, if you got, if you take that sentence away from there, then it, then, then this passage, yeah, take that out. Then this describes what we did. We, then we mentioned that they were dropped from the draft rental registration bylaw. And then at, at, after the, the end of the sentence, spring 2023, something that ECAC is exploring ways to. Um, uh, how about this? Yeah, so I could say the following proposals were dropped from the draft rental registration bylaw. Well, that's I, I'd However, rather say, ECAC yeah. is exploring ways to add these provisions. But that's our list of what we tried to put in there. I would rather present that list of what we proposed. I think so too. Then say that they were dropped, and then say that we are exploring ways to bring them back to life. Whether it be in the rental registration bylaw or some other yeah. Yeah, bylaw, because. I, I think you don't want your put to put all your eggs in that one basket. Yeah. Right. Not that this is going to limit our baskets, but might as well try to make it precise. Yeah. I just think there might be more pushback under the regis rental registration bylaw. Yeah. Um. There was. <laughs> and there will be more. It would continue. I, that's why I'm just saying I think we want to do something different. Yes. But it can be here for the report for now. Another. Yeah, but, but get rid, I'd say get rid of that sentence above that says the following proposals were dropped from the draft. I'd like to see the proposals that we propose listed. Yeah, that sentence. You're spinning. Yeah, yeah get rid of that. And say, and maybe even end that sentence uh, with a colon to indicate that the ABC were those proposals you see developed. Yeah, put a colon after council, I think. Uh, yeah, it doesn't align then, right? All right. Uh, I, I thought we wanted to say that there are provisions that were dropped. I think we do want to say that, but I want to say, here's what we proposed, ABC, and then mention that they were dropped. Uh, just in the wrong place. Yes, yeah, I just think you need yeah. to take that yeah, sentence yeah, yeah. and put it after the list, ABC. But before... Yep. Yes. The above proposal, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's we're getting there. Okay, and um, recommended proposals by ECAC where? And then these proposals were dropped from bylaw and ECAC. Yeah, put, a, put, a, put a period after spring 2023 and then get rid of and and put ECA is exploring ways to add new provisions to the by, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A number two, I know we wrote it, drafted an op-ed. I wasn't aware that it actually got published. Oh. You know what I should say? So this one was a link from Let's see where Amherst Indy. Oh, is the Indy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. 
<laughs> and I think it also got published in the Hampshire Gazette, and I don't um, have a link for that. Uh, so, okay, I'll, I'll change it to publish. Um, I mean, we didn't do the publishing, right? We did, we drafted it. <laughs> yeah. So you just want to keep it as wrote? Which we, which, which, was, we pub, which was published on March 31st. Or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you say we wrote it and it was published. Yeah, I think that's fine, right? ECSC published. Is that okay? I think what they're saying is that you it's say that the public. ECAC wrote it, <laughs> yeah, but it was published on March 31st. Yeah. Um, you can put ECA wrote an op-ed, which was published on March 31st in support of the proposed net zero school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and next section is community engagement. Just pictures. And then uh, recommendations. So I guess my thought of putting it here was get an opportunity to present this at the town council with the caveat that we're still working through it. But here's what we're thinking, just to get that conversation going. And then in August, we will share the updated goals. So I think Stephanie, really for the next meeting and the ones after, there should be town manager goals in the agenda. Okay. Can I correct this uh, adoption of specialized building code by Jan, by Jan 2025? December 2023. It's got to be before July, January 1st in order to be implemented in July. Yeah, adoption and implementation, right? Yeah. And could say for implementation, July 2024, or whatever the right word is, if not implementation. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I might have to correct the one statement about specials. So. Oh, okay, so I said for July 4th stuff. Okay, that's good. So we got CCA. More... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, do you want a more specific sounding goal uh, for PACE? Yeah. I believe that was already in the town manager's goals. So we may want or to. this year. So Andra, not right. I don't think May has so. been the previous year. I don't remember. So these that. are the town manager goals. Oh, pace. Okay. Begin implementation on a plan and utilization of pace. Yep. 
So that's for 2023. Yep. Yeah. So build on, you know, really create a culture in town where pace is the cool thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't like that one. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> don't we want to say create a groovy plan? <laughs> yeah. Pace. Cool. Well, maybe it's like increase adoption of. Mm. Increase. There hasn't been Start. any. Start. I know there's been none. <laughs> established. <Yeah. enough. laughs> established. There you go. Encourage. Establish ramp up adoption. Not just establish because it's supposed to be done this calendar year. Yeah. Well, it's partly we're waiting on the program yeah. revisions. So, you know, and I don't ramp up seems like we've already done it. So that doesn't really seem suitable yeah. there. Maybe it's established new adoption. In, in, implement uh, programming or something to. Blah, blah, blah. Go back to the language from 2023 that never happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you could just, it didn't happen in 2023. So it's not over yet. This is calendar year 2023. Fiscal year is. This, this is calendar year. year. So the way it works is the, the oh. town manager's goals is calendar year. Oh. Our report is fiscal year. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh. he's still got six months to go. He's got six so, months. So, so just put the word continue in front of it. Continue the development of whatever, blah, 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 that you have in 2023. This isn't the final version that we're going to put out that's fine for now correct yeah do we want to say continue the adoption or we, i mean we could just leave it at established adoption you can share it at the town council meeting and then well, come on this you'll have a new goal well we've adopted i mean we've already well, I, I, we I already adopted a, pace i would put establish implementation yeah Yes. Program. Yeah. Establish the in implementation of the PACE program for multifamily. But it's it, it, it now it's not just retrofits, it's new construction and retrofits. I mean, because PACE has been changed. That's true. Yeah. Multifamily business, business retrofits and new construction. Yep. So number three, um, the town manager can't approve. Yeah, the that's of, not unfortunately. Anything. Yeah. Um, I I would say implementation, although that's really not likely because all of this, all the Valley Green Energy aggregation, I would say submit application. Mm -hmm. And I know that we said that last year, but no, that is no, where we are. No. No, no, no. This is for 2024. Oh. It will be submitted. Yeah. Why, don't you put, so, but, why don't you put encourage again? No. No, because we're already past that. We're already past that. Prepare for, the, prepare for the implementation. There you go. Prepare for implementation because we're not... Um, I, actually, I would put encourage the approval even though we don't approve it. No. No. We, okay. we can't do anything, though. We can lobby uh, the governor. There you to go. That's push, You know, for but that's already in section two. Okay. But okay, I guess that gets repeated here. But but for calendar year twenty twenty four, I mean, we can lobby. I mean, I guess the hope is by the end of this calendar year, we'll have it approved. For this, it's not. That's very unlikely. What's going to happen? Okay. What we need to be doing more of in calendar year 2024 is education and awareness, because people need to know. Because they're all going to be if they're if they're basic rate customers of EverSource, they are going to be automatically opted in, and people need to know that. And then we have to make sure they're educated enough to know that that's a good thing, <laughs> and that it gives them more choice. So, 
that's more of what we've got to do because it's not going to be done. It's not going to be ready. I don't, it, it, I don't see it that may happening. be part way through, but um, I think I think it's important to to ask the town man the town council to expect the town manager to strongly advocate um, for uh, speeding we'll up to advocate the, for and prepare for implementation. No, for the speeding up the DPU. The DPU process. review process. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, ad advocate for, you know, prompt approval if you want. Um, it, and prepare for the implementation of. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what good. I would say. Yeah. Okay. I just heard from somebody from the city of Beverly that it's been three years. They're one of our NEMS network community members. And it's yeah. been three years that they've been waiting on um, DPU approval. They must have gotten it in just at the end of the line there. Yep. Should I call on DPU here? Or is it obvious here? It's six o'clock. You have your you have your robotic voice again. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. One last time, right? Um, <laughs> sh should I call out DPU here, or is it obvious? Well, you could say advocate for prompt approval by DPU, and and prepare for the implementation there. That. Then That's you, great. Yeah. Yes. yes. And you should probably spell out DPU, Department of Public Utility. Is this something that we want to do? I. I think there was another town that did, did this a while ago. Oh, this is also Stephanie, the training that was- I would eight. just, yeah, I was um, gonna say, instead of identify community champions, yeah, I would say in, um, establish a training program for community champions. This is already in the current year's goals, I believe. E yes, um, and hopefully it will move forward. <laughs> it's also on my list. <laughs> yeah, where is it? Um, last year. I don't think it's there. Anyway. Let's add uh, okay. Stephanie's reestablish the Bike share. Yes. If it has been done by then. Okay. All right. That's it. Okay. Basu, you rock. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, um, Basu. One last thing, though. Um, yeah. Yeah. You had. Earth Day event somewhere again. Just make sure you change those to Sustainability Festival. Sorry, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Do we have a um, roasting Vasu, Vasu as an agenda item? You do. Well, it didn't say roasting. <laughs> it said something about love and <laughs> appreciation. No, I prefer the roasting, to be honest. Go for it, Andra. <laughs> uh, so, Don, let's work together on just that the CCA, uh, the pace portion, and I think the rest of it. I'll look at uh, Laura's comments and make edits, and then I'll send it over to um, to Lori. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really tied up tomorrow, and I'm gone on Friday on some. Why, why don't you take a stab at it and send it to me? We don't even have to meet. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. Okay, uh, Stephanie, staff updates. Okay, I have a long list, so I'll try to be quick. Um, our fellows are here, Caitlin and Miguel. They're amazing. They're really getting into their work. Um, Miguel's been out with the facilities manager to quite a few buildings. So he's been looking at HVAC systems and really getting to know the innards of our municipal facilities, which is great. Um, Caitlin is working on the greenhouse gas emissions inventory. She's doing a great job as well. They're both at UNH um, for the next couple of days for like an orientation program that UNH does for the sustainability fellows. And I'm actually driving up there tomorrow myself to join them. Um, mm -hmm. The dashboard is being built by KLA Associates. So I have met with them along with the um, communications director. So we're kind of working together on getting the information that they need. She's working on the technical side. The communications director is working on the technical side with them. So that's kind of exciting that that's actually finally moving forward as well. Um, we're getting- Questions? Yep. Question about that. Um, what, what kind of input do we get to have? Um, I would say it's really, I would say once it's done, it's going to be something that we'll be kind of editing, but it's got a lot of the information that of all the programming that we're doing, um, work that the ECAC is doing, you know, a lot of information is going to be there on specifically focused on climate. So I don't know what specifically you want there, but there's going to be a lot of, there'll be a lot. When I have a draft of it, you know, the sort of bones of it, I can share it with you, but I can't do that right now. It's not there yet. But I mean, it's going to be something that's going to be on the municipal side that we're going to be updating as we go. So it, I would say trust us <laughs> if I can ask you to. Um, I, there'll be a lot. It's more than you have now. So and I think it'll it'll look really nice and it'll be very user friendly. Um, um, Moving forward with the fast charge station, as I said, um, we just found out what put that on hold was that the it was kind of odd. The state um, EVIP program gave grants for installation of fast charge units, but then there was no support for covering the cost of the installation and the utility um, hookup for those. And that was um, a pretty significant cost. And in the past, those programs have kind of worked together. So it was kind of almost like the state got ahead of itself a little bit. But in any case, now the utility is going to be providing the cost of the um, installing the infrastructure that changes everything. So we're um, looking at right now the municipal lot that's behind the um, CVS parking lot, like it's right in that location, which is an environmental justice uh, neighborhood. Um, the solar mapping is pretty much done, and there's going to be a review of that with the solar bylaw working group on Friday. Mike Warner, who is our GIS specialist, is going to be uh, leading that tour of the new map. Unfortunately, he cannot make it to an ECAC meeting. I tried to get him for this one. He couldn't do it, um, and he's not really going to be available for the next several meetings. So what I would recommend is we certainly record that meeting, so I will send the recording of that meeting to all of you. But also, if you watch that and you have questions or if questions come up, just send them to me and we'll, you know, maybe we can sort of go over um, at a future meeting. We can add that as an agenda item. I know Steve probably has questions. Um, so um, let's see what else. Uh, renter surveys. That's the one, the grant from um, the Mass CEC, the Empower grant that we received on um, working with family outreach. And there are roughly about 200 that have been completed so far. I don't have them yet. I don't know what the results are. Um, but it's taken a while, but I think they're doing a great job at really getting the, you know, getting folks to to actually fill out and complete the surveys. And hopefully we should have more uh, within another month. I think we might even have like another 90, 90, might have for like 140 more. That's kind of the goal. Um, the RFP for the HEAT program has been developed um, and it was submitted to our procurement folks here in town, but it had to be reviewed by legal counsel because we're using ARPA funding and they wanted to make sure our 
finance director wanted to make sure that there's no language in the RFP that might sort of conflict with guidelines for the use of the ARPA funds. So that's kind of holding that up just a little bit longer, but that should be moving forward soon. Um, and bike share, as I said earlier, um, our the company that we had worked with, Bowiegan, went bankrupt. Um, it's been in the paper. It's really unfortunate and very upsetting <laughs> for all of us who work so hard to get it in the first place. Um, but we're hopeful because there are some folks who were on the operating side of that effort that worked with Bowiegan, have familiarity with the software packages. Um, one of them is just kind of doing what they always did with operations, but another one is actually going to start their own separate company. Um, so potentially we might be able to get it up and running again. It won't be the same. It would be a bit different, but we're just trying to figure out how to move it forward. So there is um, desire and commitment from all the communities that have been engaged with it and some of the newer communities that were joining us. We started as five communities and um, we've had three more join since we started and more were even interested. So the thing that's really sad about it from our data was that that we found out was that um, it was um, expanding each year. There was more ridership each consecutive year, even during the pandemic. And we had no reason to think that 2023 would have been any less so than 22. So we, it would have been as good or even better. So there's definitely support for having this um, e-bike network in, in the communities and in the region. So hopefully we'll be able to move that forward at some point. Stephanie, do you know if why they went bankrupt? Is there a lesson? Yes, they had a really horrible business model. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> Great lesson. It was just, it was, it, you know, they were relying solely, well, I shouldn't say solely. They had a few revenue sources coming in. One of them was the fare box or, you know, the membership. Um, but also they were, they had a heavy reliance on sponsorship for the stations. So it was really kind of the operating costs was, were, are pretty high and the communities weren't footing the cost of the operating portion of that. So it was coming from sponsorship and we weren't having success in securing the sponsorship that we needed in part because it's about $15,000 annually to support the operating expenses for a station alone. So for any business, you know, especially here in Amherst, when we would go to the businesses in town, you know, they did not have the ability to, to shell out that kind of, you know, support. So um, securing a network sponsor, like getting someone like, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield or Citibank to fund your network is really the ideal business model. That's kind of the best way to make it work, um, but it's not as easy. And um, I think we just have to be more creative going forward or municipalities are going to have to start footing some of the operating cost, which frankly, I, I do think it, they should. So that's why. <laughs> Might have been a longer answer than you wanted, but that's why it tanked. Thanks, Stephanie. Sure. Uh, I, Steve. Yeah, a question, Stephanie. Um, did you say when the, the, the solar assessment would be up publicly on the town website? Yep, it'll be ready um, uh, after Friday. So I think okay. we're just trying to, Mike has been, as we've gone along, he's been making some adjustments um, and tweaking it a little bit. And I think he's doing some final, we had one of the members from the solar bylaw working group had a list of like 20 something questions and the technical team went through them. Uh, and this was before even seeing the map. <laughs> so the technical team went through them and based on some of the questions, he did a little bit of finalizing and fine tuning, not a huge amount, but um, so I just wanna make sure that um, in case anything comes out of that meeting that you know he's gonna have it completed and so that it's a final product. And, and so where will that be hosted on the town website? Do you know? Um, I think it may be on our, because we had a solar page that was specifically about the solar assessment. I think it was an Engage Amherst, um, but it'll probably be there. And I have to talk to our communications director about where we might best cite okay. that. I'm not really sure right now, to be honest. I think it may be 
it might even be with our because we have a maps section. Right. Um, it may go there. I'll I'll double check with Mike, but it may be there. And you'll tell us when it's available, right? You'll send yeah, us a I'll note. Yeah. I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link. As soon, I mean, I might send it as soon as Friday. It's very possible that I'll get it out to you by Friday. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Abby. Sure. Okay. The dreaded, the dreaded ECAC member updates. So <laughs> go for it. <laughs> That's words of gratitude and appreciation for Vasu is what it says. Well, where do we start? <laughs> I, I think I want to say two things. One, just the robot voice. It's just, it's part of my circadian rhythm now, every day, five minutes before six o'clock. <laughs> And the other thing I'd love to say too is Andra's leaving the group as well. And I it, I don't know if it's if this is your no, last no, meeting. No, okay, no, so we don't have mine. to just pass it. Yeah. To flog you today. She'll get roasted later. <laughs> I'll, I'll just add it. Um it, it was great to uh, have you join us, uh, Vasu, and then take take uh, ownership and leadership of us. Um uh Many a number of us knew each other from even before ECAC. Uh, you came out of the blue from from my perspective, uh, and didn't know you were in town and 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 part of the town. I don't know if your departure means you're leaving town, uh, but um, uh, but it's good to know you're around. Uh, and uh, it was good to uh, to have you um, uh, bring some rigor uh, to our meetings and our and structure uh, to our. Um, endeavor so um great appreciation thanks man i'm still around i just work 80 hours a week on a normal job so i just have to pause so what's another what's another couple hours okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i just want to say how much i appreciate in this um time where there's often a lack of civility <laughs> um just to how much um how wonderful it is that you've been so incredibly respectful of everybody, um, respectful of staff, respectful of members, community, public. You've just been um, so great in in that way, and I I just genuinely appreciate appreciate that. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you, and I'm very thankful I had that opportunity. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, and you I know, know. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead deflect <laughs> no I, I do want to thank all of you as well I, I you know I I'm not an expert I relied on all of you and I mean I've, I've learned so much so thank you um and uh and, you know I, and, I think special thanks to Laura as well because she let me leave she wasn't like imposing and said this is how it should be done so really appreciated um you know her support and all of you so thank you Okay, save some of your deflection. We're not done. Um, <laughs> I really appreciated uh, having you leading with your uh, data prowess, your ability to use and get us to use data um, and, and just visualizing our, um, our work. It was a real gift to have that, you know, as, as a part of the rigor that you brought um because multimodal learning is really important and you brought that that was really great and you're just a mensch really good person to work with good person in the world i'm glad that you're in an, our community thanks sandra Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. And thanks for your patience and allowing me to test different methods to, to work. Um, so appreciate it. Thank you. I will say one thing, just the, the work you, your impact will continue. I mean, I think the way that you've engaged this committee is in such a way that the work you've done will be valuable moving forward. And that's, that is 
rare and noteworthy and specifically this annual report, which I think is now templated and sort of like leveled up and ready for the next person to, to do it and other things as well. So the, the value will, will, will remain. Thanks, Jesse. And moving on. <laughs> Any other ECAC member updates? Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. I just can't uh, tolerate uh, positive words, and I just I choke I choke up, and so it's really hard for me. So, but I do really appreciate all the kind words. So, thank you. Okay. Um, other <laughs> member updates. Steve. Yeah, I'll just say. Um... I guess it was almost two weeks ago. I watched the East, uh, the Solar Bylaw Working Group meeting. The previous meeting had a really nice presentation on agrivoltaics, the com combining of agriculture and um, photovoltaics, with a bunch of really good experts that came, and um, I found it really informative. So I would encourage members to track down the video of that meeting and uh, watch, sit back and watch and learn. How about I just send the link? makes it easier <laughs> Andre and the three the um the three presentations are uh, also on the website uh just the the standalone presentations um I wanted to remind people that it is time for you to write your comments to Stephanie um showing your enthusiasm for Valley Green Energy. That should be in the subject line. And anyone else listening to us talking about it, June 30th is the deadline. And it's really important that we hear from the community members that this is wanted. That is something that the Department of Public Utilities looks at. And um, particularly, we got, you know, front and center, green, clean energy is our goal. Um, and we're doing it with our friends next door. So, well, not quite, you know, jump Ish. over one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that's extra valuable. Um, so. I knew there was something I forgot. Thanks, Sandra. Please, please, please. <laughs> Please write your comments. They don't have to be long. Thanks, Sandra. Anything else? Okay. So today's for the, today's today's the longest uh, day. It's a summer solstice. Throw that out there. It's an ECAC report. Okay. Why do the calendar say tomorrow? Yeah. Maybe it's the wee hours of the morning, the actual moment of solstice. No, it was at 1057 this morning. Oh, okay. maybe you're looking at last year's calendar. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, have a nice long evening, everyone. I encourage you to stay outside. And one of my favorite things to do every year on the solstice is to not turn the lights on when it gets dark and see if we can use that long day to sort of <laughs> Don't turn the lights on tonight. See if you can see if you can get it all done and, and just watch it get dark and go to bed. A <laughs> um, couple of more items in the agenda. So for the next meeting, uh, Stephanie will have the annual report review. We need to start talking about goals for calendar year 2024 for the town manager. I suppose she'll be voting for a new chair. Yes. And then Stephanie, in August, you'll have the expense report review. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, Steve, at some point this summer, would we get a tour of the solar field? And then, uh, do we want to add that so you can remember? We can talk about it, or you all can talk about it. I'm putting it down and then maybe it could just get scheduled yeah. with everybody in the room. Okay. And do you want me to email the town council for their time 
where we can share the annual report? Um, you might as well. Is is that does everyone want to do that? Share that report in a town council meeting, or you can vote on it next at the next meeting. That's okay too. I, th I think it's wise to do so, um, just so they okay. don't forget about us. Yeah. I'll CC Lori in my emails. You should CC me too on that one. Yeah, if yeah. You're reaching out. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else for the next meeting? Well, if the uh, GZA maps are up, then um, we may have questions about them. We sounds like we might learn something if we watch the Solar Bylaw Working Group meeting this Friday, but um, we might want to have questions or discussion about them at a future meeting once they're once we have a chance to look at them. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Any public comments? Martha? Nope. Okay. That's a wrap, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I'll see you around. Thank you, Matthew. Yep. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.